Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the first new toolkit released by Ravel since its emergence from bankruptcy in April of 2018. But I'd have to say it was worth the wait for the 68 Chevelle SS 396 kit comes in 125th scale. It's Ravel number 85-4445, and this subject hasn't been kitted since the annual was released in 68. So, with fresh new tooling and decals, you can build a really nice replica of it now. I would rate this as an intermediate level kit for the most part. Although Ravel has learned to do a lot of things right, there's still a few issues and contingencies on this kit that make it tricky for the novice builder. And some of the decals and the two-piece side view mirrors uh, are instances of that. But still, it's a pretty easy kit to put together. Now, it contains a detailed 396 uh, cubic inch SS version motor in, in some of its 128 parts. And it's molded in white, clear, and clear red with chrome and tampo printed red line vinyl tires. It also uses some metal axle pins and water slide decals with a nice set of instructions. Now the chassis has a separated frame rails and the interior also has separate side panels and seats for easy detailing. When you're done, it'll be about seven and three quarter inches long, three inches wide, and two and a half inches high. Here are the contents of the kit. And rather than pick up the parts and explain how pretty they are in my open box review, I'll just let you look at them. Well, now that that's over, I'll sh actually show you how to put the parts together. Now, we'll be using mostly model uh, cement out of the tube for this. Uh, sometimes liquid cement, occasionally super glue, and then there's some crystal clear white glue for the windows and glass. Now, make sure that you follow all of the manufacturer safety and use suggestions when you use or see any of the products in the review here. Here are the decals for the kit. The register was very good. The color is nice and even the white is pretty opaque. Um, one thing though, they, they would took a little longer to come off in the water. So, they're I think a little bit extra thick, but they hold up and they go on well. I still recommend you use some of the setting solutions to get those to settle onto the contours of the kit. I start my builds by cleaning up the body and removing any parting lines or flash. Now this is a new tool, so parting lines are almost non-existent and I didn't find any flash. But notice the corner caps in the back. That indicates that they've made contingency here to build a 69 version of this car. But that also makes building this car intrinsically more difficult. I'll show you how to deal with that. So the first thing I did uh, was glue those end caps on, clean up the body, and then glue the hinges on to the hood. When you glue these pieces on, including the corner caps, the ridges are thin, so be careful not to use too much glue so that it squeezes out of the crevices. Use some liquid cement and use just enough to get them to stick. Next, I gave uh, the inside and outside of the body a good coat of uh, light gray primer as well as the hood. And then I spray painted the bottom side of the hood with some body color. After the primer had dried, I wet sanded it with some fine sandpaper, 800 grit and then I set it aside to dry after rinsing it off clean. Then I sprayed the body with some TS31 bright orange Tamiya spray. It looked a lot like some of the cars that I seen back in the day. Just a few light coats to give it good color depth. Next I turned the hood over to do some work on the underside. First I painted the uh, hood hinges with a, a dark graphite uh, gray to uh, replicate the hinges from the day. And then after that had dried, I started to apply some white glue into the areas where the uh, hood insulation is. I followed that up by pouring some black embossing powder on it to make it look like real insulation. And here's the results. It looks pretty good, really. I'll let you in on a little secret. One of the reasons that I start with the body first is because 
that is the most uh, expressive part of your display. And occasionally something goes wrong and you have to redo it. And that means a few days in the purple lake to strip off the paint and start over. So I start with that first to make sure I've got a good clean body for the rest of the build. Well now you see we've got time to uh, put the decals into place. I started by adding the uh, the back the rear quarter panel stripes uh, at the base, worked my way uh, down the door toward the front, and then I put the uh, center stripe on top of the uh, fascia just in front of the hood, then added the side stripes to match up to it. After the decals were dry, including those tiny little keyhole decals, I started to paint the lower portion with a, a flat black paint uh, that could go right up to where the chrome strip is. Here's an example of Ravel doing some new things just right. They didn't put scripted uh, emblems on the car's body. In fact, they just left it flat so that you could use their decal to provide the scripting. It makes it much cleaner and easier to work with. Here's a decal that uh, you didn't always expect to see. It's a keyhole. Now make sure that the keyhole is up and down. And notice too that uh, at the base the black there touches the chrome. But that's okay. We'll cover that up. We'll use a variety of items to finish off the trim work on the model. Some chrome paint for the corners and the windows. And some liquid chrome pens. As well as some bare metal foil for uh, most of the trim work. Next we're going to add chrome to the inserts on top of the hood, the, fo the faux vents that are there. You can see the one on the left hasn't been done yet. Just trim it off uh, after you add some uh, bare metal foil in place and then you can uh, use a very sharp hobby knife to trim around the edges and take off the excess. And next we'll apply some bare metal foil to the uh, chrome trim just below the uh, stripes there at the bottom of the panel. The white arrow here shows some of the chrome trim uh, on the body and then the red arrow is, is pointing to the uh, vent window chrome uh, that goes around the vent window there. And uh, Next we'll be uh, using a chrome pen to outline the rear window backlight area uh, trim so that it looks like real chrome trim too. After all the decals and trim was in place I sprayed the body with some clear overcoat. Make sure you Take and put the body upside down on something that's nice and clean. And then use some thinned uh, flat black paint to go ahead and paint the, uh, the dome area and the roof liner and uh, the area around the windows to uh, make that uh, black color. Here's another great innovation from Ravel. You actually add the rear view mirror to the visor piece that goes onto the headliner. Uh, that allows you to work on it outside of the vehicle and not try and glue it to a windshield. So the visors and the cross brace that goes in front of the radiator were painted flat black. And we'll be using those pieces along with all the window glass for the next step, uh, including the rear view mirror and visors. So we're going to glue all the window pieces into place uh, using some white glue. Now we can start working on the motor and these are the basic pieces for the block heads and front uh, portion and the manifold. So we'll be putting those together. Here's the base motor assembly and everything goes together very well. It fits like a glove. Just use a little light liquid cement to put it together. I painted the engine uh, with some Chevy engine red and the transmission with some flat aluminum. And then I added a little black wash to it. That's a 50-50 uh, mix of thinner and flat black into the recesses of the transmission to give it a little color depth. Get these parts arranged to assemble the rest of the motor. And notice that the alternator has a bracket on it. It's just not hanging out there in midair. If they could only do that for the other accessories too. I noticed when I was uh, getting the uh, valve covers ready for assembly that the chrome rubbed off of them. Yes, it's so thin it'll rub right off if you don't handle it very carefully. So I stripped the rest of the chrome off and I painted the uh, valve covers the, a standard uh, Chevy engine red. 
I noticed when I was putting the engine together that one of the pieces, uh, the fan clutch number 101, did not have the shaft that's indicated here on the instructions. I don't know if it's a molding error or the instructions are an error, but nonetheless, I used a round toothpick to align the fan with the, uh, the front of the engine. The kit comes with some really nice uh, engine uh, area graphics as well, uh, so those will go into place as you're building the kit. Um, we'll be putting um, number five on the air cleaner, which also has some pretty thin uh, chrome, by the way. Number one goes on the uh, valve cover on the right side of the engine up front, and number two is for the oil filter. And then the Delco uh, emblem there, number three, goes on the battery and there's a radiator support um, uh, decal number four as well. You may need some tweezers to uh, locate these decals into position and then uh, a pointy toothpick in order to stabilize them for application. I was really impressed with the look of the motor uh, including the decals that really set it off, um, the extra alternator bracket it really looked nice, um, and I think this is a, a really great looking engine for any model. By the way, the air cleaner is keyed to the carburetor, so make sure that you uh, engage that key into position before you put your decal on up front, or you'll have to remove the key and just uh, line it up yourself. Another issue I had with the kit was I was missing one of the wheel backs. It just wasn't there. It wasn't in the kit at all. I don't know if it fell out when it was being packed or what. So I did what most modelers would do. After I got um, to thinking about it, I just grabbed one out of the uh, kit stash. Now the hole in the center was too big. So what I did was I used a piece of uh, evergreen tubing and I went ahead and filled it. And then cut the tubing off uh, so that I could use it as a, a replacement hub. Next, I painted all of these parts a semi-gloss black, except for the uh, frame rails, which were a gloss black, uh, to get them ready for assembly in various areas. As I mentioned, I painted the frame rails separately, but these pieces, uh, they go to the frame for the rear end, and I decided to assemble them for strength, uh, and put them into place uh, before I painted it. Also, that uh, small uh, front uh, strut there, it gets painted uh, aluminum. Here is the pieces for the front uh, suspension. Uh, the unit up front uh, is nice because it's it's mostly assembled, including the tie rods. I remember a day when they over-engineered these and had you gluing tie rod ends together as uh, structural pieces. Well, they don't do that anymore because there's no need to. They're all the same color. We can assemble all of the uh, front suspension pieces to the frame rails. And here's what she'll look like uh, when you've got that done. Spray paint the top and bottom section uh, in the front there of the uh, chassis pan with, with some uh, flat black uh, and give it a nice coat. Next we're going to locate the glue points and by the way make sure that you remove any glue or chrome plating uh, from two points that are going to be joined so that the uh, they get a good bond. So we're going to add the motor now and it fits perfectly onto the two side mounts and the transmission mount. And then also we're going to put the uh, the steering box and shaft into place uh, on the side of the frame just in, uh, to the front end of the motor. Assemble the coil springs and the trailing arms there, uh, attachment points for the transaxle uh, to, to the axle housing. And then also note that uh, we're going to install the uh, drive shaft and that it has a, a blush of rust on it um, and we did that to the exhaust manifolds in the engine too and that's what we used to call lot rot in the car business because as the uh, car would set on the uh, parking lots waiting for delivery or sale uh, they would get a light rust on them especially parts that heated up and cooled off due to condensation. So the uh, mufflers are painted uh, a bright aluminum and then the uh, Exhaust pipes are painted steel, but it also gets um, a blush of, of rust, and that's really just uh, a light, thinned uh, coat of, of uh, brown paint that uh, looks like rust when it's applied uh, it's moddingly uh, in different spots over the uh, course of the pipe. So next we're going to add the exhaust into place. And it has to be threaded uh, under and around the top of the rear axle. 
Normally I'd like to build uh, construct all the suspension first, but that stabilizer arms for the mufflers that were aluminum had to be detailed and then they're underneath. So now that that's into place, we'll thread those mufflers into position and we'll hold them uh, to the drive shaft there with a little piece of tape until we get everything all set up. And then we can glue the pipes into position on the uh, bottom of the chassis and in, on, onto the uh, exhaust uh, manifolds. Now we can assemble the uh, seat fronts and backs for the front seats and then uh, clean those up. They do have a little flash and some uh, sprue points on them so get those uh, cleaned up nice with some uh, fine sandpaper sticks. Once those are assembled and dried you can uh, and cleaned up you can give them a, a spray paint uh, uh, with the uh, flat black or, or semi gloss black uh, to give them a nice uh, coloration for the seating. Now the doors uh, panels uh, and you know in the interior pieces mostly were painted flat black earlier and we're going to detail those now. Uh, I used the chrome pen on the door handles and uh, I applied some foil to the uh, trim that's on the door panels itself. Uh, there's also some buttons in the seats that uh, I used a small one millimeter marker for and uh, used a chrome pen on those. And we're going to uh, put all these pieces together uh, including the console and by the way, uh, nice job with the pedal assembly. It also has a parking brake lever on it. I noticed something very curious. I'm not sure why they did it, but not only did Ravel put their copyright script on the uh, top of the floor pan, they had also put it on the bottom of the floor pan uh, underneath where the axle goes. I, I really don't understand why it had to be in both places. Uh, it could have been uh, better served to just put that on top so it's not seen from outside the vehicle. So now we can uh, add the interior pieces and um, that back seat fits perfectly into place but there's not a lot of gluing surface so once again make sure that you scrape uh, any paint off from where they contact and apply the glue uh, judiciously there to make sure that you get a good adhesion. Uh, so once the back seat's in place you can put the side panels into position and uh, also we're going to then add the front seats and they fit perfectly on this pedestal system uh, that they've invented here to put the seats into place uh, on the riser. It's really nice. Uh, that's another great idea from Ravel. And we're going to add the console and the shift mechanism too. We'll detail the dashboard now with these pieces including the steering mechanism and some nice decals that will go into place on it. So I detailed the knobs with some of the chrome pens and those decals for the gauges uh, are just glued into place. They're not water, they're water slide decals but you just cut them out. Uh, don't put them in water. Just use some uh, white glue or crystal clear on the back side and glue them into position after you've trimmed them to shape. Uh, and there's a chrome bar on the uh, glove box area there and also a decal that goes on that. And even uh, a um, decal for the the glove box lock. The uh, steering wheel gets a little uh, treatment with the one millimeter chrome pen and also I used a piece of uh, bare metal foil to uh, highlight the uh, turn signal stock. While we're at it we're going to add some detail to the battery and also some pieces that go on the front of the firewall. Uh, the booster there uh, gets uh, some uh, gold paint on the top of the uh, master cylinder and the uh, booster body uh, and uh, I painted the uh, little cross uh, uh, straps there uh, silver also so you can go ahead and assemble those and uh, the battery gets uh, some uh, silver paint on the uh, terminals uh, as well as the caps which are first painted white and then we add a little red uh, uh, marking pen to those and the Delco emblem there uh, actually you just scraped off the paint from the top and you can see it but we'll be adding the decal to that too. The, uh, the dashboard now uh, glues right into place and the slots provided there and then uh, we're going to take the uh, firewall and we're going to add that to the front of uh, uh, the engine area there or the back of the engine area and that goes uh, right on that ledge. Uh, you can see that it's white in this uh, uh, where the paint's been scraped off. 
Well, now we can work on the tires and uh, wheel assemblies, and we're going to grab these nice-looking uh, Tampo printed red lines. Still no brands on our Revell kits yet, but uh, these are nice-looking anyway, and we've got some great-looking uh, Corvette looking uh, wheels there uh, with the center hubs and, and the metal pins uh, that will act as axle pins. So go ahead and insert the uh, axle pins into the uh, inner wheel there, and they'll be protruding, of course, outward. Uh, on the outside of the uh, wheel and then we're going to trap those with the uh, hubcaps. I always like to rough up the uh, tire tread. Uh, as you can see here you just press and roll the tread on a nice flat piece of 220 grit paper, uh, sandpaper, so that um, it kind of roughs up the treads uh, and that happens immediately after uh, you get about a mile on the vehicle. So here are the front and back sides of the tires. They look uh, pretty nice. I used some uh, black paint to accent the uh, uh, stripe, or I should say the ridges there on the inside of the center hub. And, and of course the outside is uh, chrome and it'll get a decal. Uh, but we'll also uh, paint the um, uh, spokes uh, with some uh, flat aluminum uh, to replicate the real tire. And also the black will get painted flat black uh, uh, treatment to make that look more realistic. Now we can add the tires uh, and wheel assemblies there to the axles. Uh, just put a little glue in the end of the axles and then insert the axle pins in there. Uh, if you want those to roll, make sure that uh, they don't uh, get onto the wheel hub itself. So get these pieces out for the uh, radiator there and the... Uh, and the lower hose and we'll be assembling the radiator uh, together that's three piece unit. So just locate the battery we've already described how that's detailed uh, we'll be putting that into position in the engine bay. So glue the battery uh, to the fender wall there up front uh, it's got a contour and then uh, we're going to add decal number three uh, for the Delco script emblem. You can also see here that the washer bottle uh, is getting painted a, a flat white color and the uh, battery is in position and at this point we now have what we call a rolling chassis to build the rest of the kit. So scrape off any of the paint and uh, now we can add the radiator shroud and all of that brace work to the front of the engine bay there. It will glue right into place in the front there in some pegs uh, with locators and uh, now you can see that the engine bay has come together. We've added the um, uh, decal to the shroud uh, cover there, brace, and we've also added uh, a black cap to the washer bottle. Now as you can see, also here we have the uh, radiator hose going to the um, water uh, temperature gauge housing uh, and that's a nice touch because it's molded onto the hose so you can detail that separately with some engine color. Another really great uh, suggestion here uh, from Ravel is to have a separate filler panel between the grill and the bumper. That means you can detail that with some body color uh, and you've got a nice clean look. Now uh, in this uh, we'll be putting all the bumpers together and there are some things you should know. Uh, uh, the grill, of course, was painted flat black. Um, use some thin paint there and fill it in. And then um, that's for the SS version. And, of course, the decal goes on the SS uh, emblem. Now, the um, uh, turn signals in front were painted uh, yellow on the front. Uh, and then the headlights, um, they have lines in them. And they also have a triangle on these. So uh, rotate the headlights with... Uh, uh, into position, use some white glue to install those and then uh, the apex uh, has the point going up and the uh, lines are vertical. Now the uh, tail lights are also left and right. You have to put them on the right side so keep those uh, straight and into position. In the rear uh, I just put some uh, foil on the back side of the lenses and then uh, glued those into place with some white glue as well. Next uh, scrape any uh, uh, of the plating from the license plate holders and put those into position on the bumpers. So scrape uh, glue from the contact points and then go ahead and install the, the front grill and the bumpers into position. They, they fit right into place on the place on the positions where they're supposed to go so just make sure you remove the glue and glue them into place. Same thing with the rear. Uh, as you can see here uh, everything is in position. 
and uh, even uh, the SS emblem and the keyhole are looking good with the decals supplied there. Uh, in another really good move, uh, Ravel has um, added some recesses to the door panels to install the door handles. Um, just scrape the glue off of that little recess and then a dab of uh, tube glue there and you can uh, put the, de the door handles right into place. Now also uh, for expediency and to cut corners, they've added a two-piece mirror because the 69's mirrors are kind of a squarish and uh, these of course are round. So you just put a little dab of tube glue, scrape off the glue from the back of the mirror and put that into the indent. And then glue it to the door panel uh, where the recess is and rotate the uh, mirror into position so that it's where you want it before the glue sets. There's only a couple of things left to install now. Those exhaust tips in the back end. I'm going to uh, fill the uh, indents there with a little flat black paint. And uh, I also uh, didn't use the plates that were supplied. Nope, I uh, printed my logo out and made license plates out of them. Cut them to size, covered them with tape, and then glued them into position so that my uh, Chevelle is now street legal. You don't have many pieces left when you're done. Just the optional uh, wheel covers and some stripes uh, and also some lenses that go in the front end and I believe those will be um, uh, positioned for the 69 version. Um, but I didn't use the plates uh, supplied either so uh, that's all you'll have left over. Well, there you have it. This gorgeous looking model is almost as pretty as the original car. And you can uh, put one of these together easily, uh, except for a few little issues. And those are hard to overcome if you've had a little experience. I wouldn't give this to a novice just because of that. But uh, for most modelers, here you got uh, a beautiful 1968 Chevelle SS model. So, if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website, right on Thanks.